Kevin, welcome back to our decking series. Time for another segment. All right, thank yeah. you. In this okay. one, I thought we would talk about a, a subject that's super important no matter what the deck surface is, is uh, having proper ventilation. Because I know there's some products that you could throw in a bucket of water for five years and they don't care. They'll warranty it till the cows come home. And others, hey, it might be a bit of an issue. So Kev, I was thinking maybe you could talk about you know, why ventilation is important even with a manufactured decking product. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Um, I think with um, with anything in the Northwest, you want that gapping to be there for airflow and all that, but also you need that space underneath the product. So our product's gonna require three and a half inches between ground or any other surface to the decking board. To the bottom of the board, yeah. okay, minimum. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that, that space is, designed for airflow and all that other stuff, but it does add to the lower maintenance side of it too. Yeah, okay, totally makes sense. So just a little bit of a safety situation. So if you and I built a deck in the backyard, it's kind of a soggy landscape, maybe there's a little bit of standing water once in a while, just buying you a little extra help. When it comes to ventilation, it just seems like there's all kinds of things that can get impacted. I know when we were, when we were prepping for the series, a couple things that came to mind were, I mean, just your, your crawl space, you know, they've got vents around the perimeter of the house to, to help get airflow in there. If you build a deck, typically your rim board is above those vents maybe, and then all of a sudden you close the thing in, you're impacting that type of flow. We've uh -huh. even run into situations where, you know, the deck might be really low or maybe covered on both sides, and even the treated lumber starts having issues. You create this sauna environment, push moisture back into the wood, and it starts doing weird things. And I know we're talking about manufactured decking today, but uh, when it comes to a wood deck of some sort, you get a bunch of humidity underneath, you're gonna have a heck of a hard time keeping that film, that paint on a stain yeah. on the product. So it creates all kinds of issues. You know, when we talk about that, it always gets my brain going towards decks built on top of some sort of waterproof membrane. And just to be clear, those that's two different topics there. You're trying to create a waterproof membrane for whatever reason. That's a separate topic. And that's got its own set of warranty issues and best practices. And now all of a sudden we're saying, okay, we've got that done, but we want it to maybe look a little better, more functional. So we want to put something on top of it, whether it be deck squares or blah, blah, blah. So they come walk in the lumberyard and they want to put something on there. Yeah. How does a scenario like that play with manufactured decking products, specifically, uh, you know, with ventilation and drainage, things like that. Yeah, we, we would call that like a rooftop deck. So in our insulation book, we kind of have a, a page dedicated to that, but that's a tough application. So you're really gonna wanna know what you're doing. One, you're dealing with a surface that is uh, watertight. Yeah. You know, so if you're doing it over a carport, or if you're Could doing it, even today, which is popular, and we do a lot of multifamily stuff mm -hmm. and a lot of um, you know apartment complex because that have rooftop decks on top, and you're building our product on top of that surface, um, we're still just a deck. I mean, you put our boards on framing yeah. materials, and that's that's it. We're the yeah. aesthetics of it. But yeah. when you're talking about rooftops, you really got to consider that connection between the joist and the rooftop. You just don't want to lay out joists and screw them in. You and you definitely do don't want to screw them into that surface, right? Because yeah. you could create leaks. But also you need to do either in grids, four by four grids, which are manageable to move weight wise. And um, you know, make sure you have access to that rooftop. Because That's if something, yeah, yeah, if you do have a leak over time, you know, say 10 years from now, there's something happened to that rooftop you need access to it to fix it. So or you're just gonna annual have to pull it. Right? And you pull yeah, it up and absolutely. clean out the debris, check it out. Yeah. You make a great point, because over the years it seems like the scenarios we've talked about at the, at the job mostly, people were taking a treated joist like we showed in some of our other segments yeah. and ripping that thing down <laughs> some, for some reason, right? To, I guess to get the deck level, because well, the waterproof system had a slope to it's it. It's got a slope, So they absolutely, rip it, yeah. and then, like say, seems like where things go sideways is people try to fasten that to the waterproof membrane cause a the problem in the other area. Yeah. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But yeah. you mentioned these pedestal systems nowadays yeah. where they just set on there, they're adjustable. 
uh, they probably work well for building out these grids that you're talking about, things yeah. like that. Yeah, no, and the Pettit stool is outstanding. I mean, they, we've done multiple ones on commercial projects and any rooftop decks that are on apartments, but the Pettit stools would uh, be adjustable and turn up and yeah. then fit the joists on top of that. But what you do is set all these Pettit stools around and get your laser level. Yeah to go through and get it your surface level. Again, you want it, when you're working with tracks, you want to be level surface yeah. on your choice. Um, you get all those to height, put them all in, and gotcha. good to go. Okay. We talked about different designs and things that will come walking in. People, hey, I want to build this. And it could be over a waterproof membrane, potentially you know, a second story situation where they've got a railing around it for safety reasons. But instead of being an open railing, it's maybe it's sided or something. So the thing is just boxed in and the decking is going right up yeah. against it. So huge red flag there, big time challenge. Or, you know, it could even be a low level deck in a backyard that's pretty small and they just max it out with the deck and push it up to the push it up to their fence. Yeah, because if you're boxing everything in and it's all a concrete, you know, foundation. I mean, you're going to need to have a pr really good water flow. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great segment. I, number one, consider ventilation always, no matter what kind of structure you're building. That's a huge thing in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. And two, if somehow you're going to go on some sort of a waterproof membrane, really do your homework. Yeah. Because there's a lot to it. Yes. And you've got kind of two different things to factor in there. So, yeah, I appreciate your feedback and all that. Thank you, sir. All right. Great. Thank you, Joe.